Okay, so the first thing that we want to do to upgrade the new Turning Point software is go to turningtechnologies.com. Go to downloads. And we're going to go to this Turning Point Cloud. If you haven't already downloaded the software, you go to create a turning account. And then you have to sign up for an account. You want to pick participant if you're a student, instructor if you're an instructor, and create an account. I'm still recording or not. So, um, fill this out. has to have a um, lowercase letter, an uppercase letter, and a numeral. When you fill out the, uh, the registration form as an instructor, it takes you to this page where it gives you ops the ability to download the software that you want, download some quick user guides, and also access the web client for Responseware. Responseware is the virtual clicker software that you can run from a browser from an iOS device or an Android device. All right, so now that you've got this done, you need to remember the your username and password in order to start the application. So for example, if I close this window, instead of immediately opening up just the software, it asks you to log in. So at this point, everything should look pretty familiar. Obviously, they've changed the coloring and the graphics, but this is the same as Turning Point 5 in terms of functionality. The only other thing is that um, since the responseware is being included with the purchase of new clickers and also um, people who had previously registered clickers on campus are going to be getting um, a free online account and access to responseware, that if you decide that you want to use responseware you can you go up to this this has always been here it was in turning point five we just didn't allow it on main campus to activate the virtual clicker usage so um, you use the default responseware um, server that's in there your username and password again and sign in and it gives you the opportunity to um, get a, uh, a session ID um, I would leave all this as optional and I would disable participant messaging unless you think that that's particularly useful for some reason. Um, and if you're adding um, question lists, if you're using question lists, this is the only reason that this is uh, of any interest to you because it'll just say question two, A, B, C, D, and then A, B, C, D at the bottom for where they could answer if you don't have a question list. If you're using um, turning point anywhere type of a format, it won't have the questions by default. But if you do, uh, you might want to put this to display response buttons only if you're trying to make sure people are really in the class. Otherwise, um, displaying the text, images, and content to participants could be useful if you have someone who is um, what is that? Nearsighted? Somebody has a problem seeing the screen, then they can see the question right in front of them. So that is the decision you're going to have to use to make yourself in terms of how you teach in your classroom. And then you say save and start the session and it gives you a session ID. On the, um, on the response where they're going to need that session ID to enter 
your, your uh, polling session, so the class for the day. So you can close this now. Go ahead and say I'm going to start the session. And right here, if I hit the um, if I hit the antenna, I have to bring it over here. It shows you the the um, radio frequency channel that we've always used in the classes, and now also your session ID for people with responseware. That's it. That's the only differences, and that's your walkthrough for how to get a new turning point um, online account or cloud account cloud registration.